So let's solve the challenge room from the Shakti teaser event using what we just learned. First, uh, I will run the challenge just to see what happens. So it brings a string, hello there, and ask for the input of the correct flag already. So let's see. And then it fails with the string long way to go. Um, but it's interesting to see that I needed to input two pieces of information before it checks. So let's go back. First, we set up our environment, as we already did in the other um, challenge. And now uh, let's check the strings. So we see it's using a scanf and here is uh, the string that we saw just in the beginning and right after we see the string that told us that we faked. We have a fake string here and it's also interesting to see here is your flag and then we have a string format with a two s like expecting two strings or printing two strings so maybe when we in, uh, when we input our two strings like before uh, it's going to be printed in the in the end with well done and what we want probably is like the well done and the here's your flag so let's check it on the debugger. So here we go. What we see here is a puts, and here we see the scum f call with some kind of uh, string format. We can also see here that we, we are storing the, the scanf results here on this tag. And what we are going to do is check the, the string format to be sure. So we can do that. In another cell. I'm going to check the string format and what we have here is 873 hex plus 48a. So let's do that. 873 plus 48a. And then we see the, uh, that it's the scanf is expecting two strings. So it's what the same behavior we ex uh, expected already from running the binary. So we continue looking into the disassemble a little bit, and then we see two calls for string length, and it's measuring the length of the input that we have from this kind of or from or uh, flex and they are both failing somewhere how if it's not equal um, it's going to be jumping to 8a1 8a1 comes to a call for puts and exit so we could assume that it's uh, bad <laughs> because it's exiting before telling, doing anything else 
And then the, the next string length is going to HB7 and HB7 is, um, if it's equal, it, it's going to start the manipulation of this string. So we should assume that um, both of our strings should have a length of 70, so hex 11. So we go down a little bit more and we see that we have a lot of um, information lost because uh, with the manipulation here, so it, it, it's not really possible to reverse in a, a traditional way. And we keep going down and down and down and looking for compares or other branching points that are important. And here we are, that's the first compare. And if it's not equal, it's jumping to BE2. Let's see what it's in there. BE2 is puts and exit. So it's probably not good again, but we can check what is uh, the string that it's printing right there. And that was in the B in nine. Three four. And we can see it's printing not there yet. So it's it's one of the uh, fair strings. So we can move further on the code and we see another compare with a jump not equal to the same address, BE2. And then it continues until a new string compare with a test. If it's equal, it's jump. If it's not equal, it's jumping to BCC. So let's see what's in BCC. It's another put. So let's check what it's printing that line so it's b this is b d3 and two three And it is still a fail, so we want this to be equal uh, to go across the next jump that it's printing this line here. So this is the call probably that we want. Let's see what's printing in there. And the address for the printf here print B94 184. And that's the well done string. So this is the right path. Well, that we want to reach. We want to be somewhere here. And you can see that here it's loading the values that we stored from the scanf and using the printf function to print that string uh, with the string format of three strings that we already saw without a, a white space in between. So let's get into Angular. So first we need to set up the environment, meaning we import Angular, clarify, and sys for reasons that it's just easier. And then we can create our project with auto load lips false. And now we need to define the initial stage. We can see here that the base address is loaded here so we can just give this address to the 
So anger, to start from the beginning. And our initial state is going to be project factory. And we are going to tell anger to start from the entry point of the binary entry state. Uh, so what we are going to do is um, basically run the binary until the scan end and then inject our symbolic values in, instead of uh, having a flag. And then we let anger reason about what possibilities we have for that string to end up in the well-done uh, state that we know. So this is the algorithm. Uh, let's do it. So first we need the scanf address because that's where we want to stop it. Uh, stop anger. So we go back and was right in the beginning. So here is the scanf call, meaning we want to stop anger just right before it calls the scanf. So in the hex h73. And then our find address or the point that we are going to try to read is the PESA address and she is kind of. We are going to start a simulation with the initial state that we just uh, defined here. That means from the entry point of the binary and explore until we are in uh, the find address. We don't have any branching points leading us to, to scanf, it's a straight path. So we should only have one found and it's uh, very fast. So what we are going to do is now store the state that the binary is right now and modify it in a way that we want it to have. So what we are going to do, as I, say, uh, I said before, is inject binary uh, a symbolic uh, bit vector instead of giving two concrete strings to the challenge. So the way we can do that is creating a bit vector is a symbolic, and we know that it needs to be to have like uh, eleven hex or seventeen. Uh, of length so we can pass the checks so this is how we do it like 80 bits per byte 17 uh, characters 17 bytes so we declare this symbolic flags and then we store them uh, at the same place where the binary is expecting to find our strings if we go back in the code we can see that after scanf, like here on the scanf, we are going to have our values first inside RSI and the second one in RDX. So this is our these are the uh, addresses that we need. So let's start the addresses here. So we need one in RSI and one in RDX. Then we inject our, our symbolic uh, flex that we declared here into that uh, symbolic addresses that uh, we just found from the binary. So the way that we can do it in Anger is uh, using the state because we want to inject the values in this state that we, we are right now. And we want to inject it, inject it into the memory. So we use the memory and the store. And we are storing the symbolic values into that address in the memory that we just found. Now it's the time that we need to help Anger a little bit. Uh, as we know that it is uh, a CTF and it's expecting strings, we can constrain the range of the input of these symbolic values into the printable charts because we know that it's going to be uh, characters. Uh, the second thing that we can um, 
constraint is the beginning of the flag that it's uh, basically Shakti CTF. Every CTF has this flag format and that's what we are going to add. Uh, what we do is always support the symbolic execution with all the constraints or information that we have already so that it is faster and doesn't need to reason about things that we already know. So the next one is a little bit of a trick because it's not really how you normally do things. Uh, it's more like a way that it works all the time. If we, as we are still not using the hooking uh, for this kind of function, what we want to do is basically skip that call. Because if we call scanf right now, it's going to mess up with the state that we just created. So what we want to do is basically skip this call. Right now, we are here in the 873. So if we skip the call uh, to scanf and just go to the next um, instruction, basically not being this one, uh, we can see that the difference between these addresses is like A. Uh, if it's easier for you, you can see here it's plus uh, 57. Here is plus 67, so we are skipping 10 uh, bytes, and that's what we are going to do uh, in Anger. So you don't really need to understand how um, how the whole uh, architecture works. You can just like use logic and move the instruction pointer 10 um, bytes already. So what we do now is basically start the new simulation from that point. So we start a simulation again, but this time we put the name, uh, we start with the state that we modified with all these constraints and, and our symbolic, uh, our symbolic plan. What we are going to do here is basically explore until we find the success string. This we can do exactly the same way we did in other examples until now. So we create like a, a small lambda function that it's looking for a string. And we know that uh, our string here is your flag or something. So we just type that. And we are going to look for it into the strings uh, it needs to be in the as standard out. So let's see the dump one. And we let it run. There we go, we found one. So let's check what we found. Uh, for that we can you, you can say that we, we have the new found. And this uh, is going to be evaluated or concretized and casted to bytes so we can read what's actually being printed. And here you are. You, we can see it's hello there, uh, the well done um, string, and then we have here's your flag. But as you can see, normally the flag format has like uh, has not, it's not like a name here. You need to close that parenthesis thing. And also we can see that uh, this is not really making any sense as well as the tick here. So our string is not perfect. We can try to put it as an output there, but we, we can already see that it's not really right. So now we use this uh, here. So this seems wrong, what we can do uh, is simply telling, tell the server that which byte is wrong <laughs> and say like, please fix it. And what we do is like, we can uh, have the tick, for example, here. We can also add another uh, constraint that we know that it's uh, wrong, that it's uh, the pipe, for example, that it's not a number or a letter. So we can use 
that also as a constraint. So that's in the byte five of the, of the second part of the flag. And what we know it, it isn't, uh, it isn't a pipe. What we can also do is, uh, let's see if it works like this first. So to add these constraints, what we need to do is add the constraint, but not in the state that we are right now because we modified it, right? So what we need to do is go back to, to, this, uh, to the beginning and just run it again. So we find again the clean state that we had before. We store it again in the state. We generate new uh, symbolic values. We store the addresses that are the same. We store them in the memory in that addresses that we had. And then we add all the constraints that we have now. Now we can skip the, the 10 bytes again. Uh, it doesn't matter in, in which sequence we make this. And then we run the simulation again. We found another one. So that's good. Let's print. As you can see, now we have something that makes sense. It's even saying anger here. But we still have this M instead of the closing par parenthesis. And we have a tilde in here. So let's constrain that a little bit more. So what we know now is that the flag two on the byte uh, five that it was the pipe before is a isn't a tilde. So let's remove that one. We could try to add another. A constraint, but let's just try to uh, keep it at a minimum. Let's see if Anger can do it for us. So again, we restart, get the clean uh, state before the scanf. We store it, we modify with our symbolic values, we add our constraints again, and then we skip the 10 bytes and run the simulation again. There we are, we found another one. Let's see what we found this time. And look, uh, Z3 is the other way of solving this challenge. The link to see how the team checked it. Uh, so with it using z 3 pi is uh, here on on the course you can click and have a look at the script there uh, and as we fixed the z here we also fixed the the closing of the flag format So what we can do is now print. Uh, I just printed with like a, a small white space in between this so that we know uh, the 17 and the 17 in a way that we don't need to like uh, <laughs> suffer too much. So what we are going to do is use the this flag now and try to solve the challenge. So we can put our first help of the flag and now we go back get the second part and there you go we just took the moon challenge again have a look uh, at the z3 solution from the team shakti